All right, last hour we built, rebuilt this table adapter because we want to get the customer ID in here. Much easier to rebuild them to try to modify them. Also rebuilt these very quickly, rebuilt this. This one was a little trickier because it was multi-tables. And then for lookup purposes, we brought this one in and we also created the customers class. If you were developing this for real, you would have at least two forms here, one for modifying orders and one for adding, modifying customer information. So if a customer's phone number changes, you need a form where you can go change that. We're not going that far in this class. You know how to build a form. You know how to validate its inputs. This form would have one, two, three fields, all text boxes. You know how to validate those. And you know how to switch from one form to the other because you've done that with the welcome screen. So we're not going there. It's redundant. It takes a lot of time that we don't need. So we're not going to actually build a form for customers. But if this was a real application, you would. So that you can modify the customer data. And if then we had a store data for which pizza store are we talking about, I'd need another form, probably. If we had a supplier table of who provides our pepperoni, I'd need another form. And that's how you get to 50 some odd forms in a project for every table and then maybe more you need a form. What we're going to use is this one and I'm going to kind of jump ahead in my notes here for just a second so you get a picture of where we're going. I'm going to open up the form. And I have a problem though. I do not want my user typing in customer names. Very likely to type it wrong, especially when it comes to Eve Bupre. I can imagine all the different ways to spell that. I don't want them typing them in. I want them picking them from a list instead. So what we're going to do is remove these two pieces of parts and replace them with a combo box. I could have hundreds, thousands of customers. So I'm going to name this before I forget. Could have hundreds of thousands of customers. So I want to do the auto complete mode of suggest depend from the list. That way I type a couple of letters, customer name comes in. Probably should tweak my tab order now that I've messed that all up. And the rest looks okay. But now how do I fill this? And what other prep is there that needs to be done? So let's go back to the notes. What I'm going to need is a customer class. Because when I ask to do a lookup, I can't go to the database. I can't, from my form, say, go to the database and give me the customers that I need and put them in this combo box. I'm bypassing my class. I'm by bypassing the business class. Not a good idea. Remember where our order lookup is? It's in the orders class. So the next thing we're going to need, this is where we're going. The next thing we're going to need to support us is a new class. So now we're going to have our first project with more than one class in it. And again, for every table, there's typically a class. One at a time. Build them, test them, move on. Kind of see thinking agile. What form do I need first to get anything done at all? And then what next form? And then to build a class to go with it and so on. You can see where Agile, when we prioritize these things, we can say, yeah, I can build that form. I'm trained by Volker. It shouldn't take me more than a week. Build that form, all the validation, etc. Test it. Done. The next sprint. Pick a different one. Very possible. So I need a new class to 
add a new object, we use the second button. And there's an option here for class that makes it easy. Add a new class to my project. What do you want to call this? CLS customer. Make sure it's got class selected. It does. You can put the .cs back on there, but Visual Studio will do it. Or be smart and never take it off in the first place. And now I have a new class called CLS Customer, and just like always, we take the prefix off because that's <coughs> a good thing for the file name. Notice all my classes are together. That's why I do that. All my forms would be together. All my classes are together because they all have the same prefix. And I want to make that change everywhere. It shouldn't be too many other places, but just in case. So now I have a customer class. These next couple of steps aren't terribly required, aren't, aren't absolutely necessary because I don't have a form to edit customers yet. But I think this is a good place for us with just a few fields to remember the stuff that we did. I'm not going to go crazy with validation. When you build your Unit 4 projects, you'd be required to put the properties in here just to get some more experience, but you don't have to add any validation to those properties unless you want to. So I want to add a new property, and let's see, that's prop full, right? Tab tab. Good. This first one is an integer, and it's my customer ID. Property name, customer ID. And it's read only, so I don't want to set it. Should sound familiar. Same kind of stuff you've been doing, part one of unit three. And then I need another property. This one's going to be a string. And this is where the customer first name comes in. Or let's just make it first name, keep it simple. Done. I don't like the extra blank line in here. I like to keep them tight together like that. It's just me. And another prop full. Another string. Now I have a basic class. So it's a good practice. Could create some business constants, could create some regions here, do the same kind of stuff we did before. I'm going to add a region for my data access methods. And the first method I'm going to create in here is my customer lookup. Now, if you were a little crusty on how to do customer lookups, all of these lookups are basically the same. So what I'm going to do is switch to my pizza class. I'm down here to my data access methods. Get record. This is a bunch of errors in here. Left over from customer first names and stuff. We're going to have to clean that up. Save record. What am I looking for? There it is. The lookup. Copy it. Switch back to the customer class and paste it. This method reads to look up customers. Query DS orders. Query customer lookup data table. Just change everything or retype it. DS orders, table adapters, query customer. Customer. 
Done. Notice how similar all these lookups are. Just change the name of the tables. Then go out and fill the TA with all of the information for all of the customers and return. I could add methods here to delete, update customers, but you know how to do that. And it's not required. All I'm going to require of you in Unit 4 is that you create the members, I'm sorry, the members and the properties, and that you create the lookup, data, the lookup function that we need. The rest of it you can add later when you build a form. You can modify this and go in and start putting validation in here and saying that the phone number can't be blank or the last name can't be blank and capitalize it. All that stuff that you already know how to do. I'm not going to cover it again. You're not required to do it in Unit 4 either. So we built a class. We could have moved the first name, last name. That would have been smart from class pizza order because there's no first name, last name here anymore. So all of this, that would have been really smart. Here's customer first name instead of just first name, last name. This already has all the validation. I didn't move it. I'm just going to delete it. No, that would be really stupid. Cut it. Switch back to customer. And this first name, last name, I'm going to pull them out. And I just blew it because I copied on top of what was on my clipboard. So I guess I'm staying with that after all. Because my clipboard is gone and I, oh, I could probably undo. Okay, one more time. Cut. <clears throat> Paste. There we go. Lost my members, so I can go steal those too. Well, I just missed one, so. When you do your DVD, you're going to be adding a store. You already have a store property. So you could steal that, whatever validation it has, and put it in the new store class. You're doing car maintenance, you've got a shop. Steal the logic for that, put it in the new shop class. The only thing I don't have is my get max first name length. <clears throat> Probably could steal that from here too. These no longer apply to the pizza order. Why would the pizza order have a maximum customer name link? It doesn't. The customer class does. And this is also part of what we'll be learning in systems class. And you'll be learning in systems class, all of you. How do we keep these classes? How do we design the classes and keep them separate? Very similar to tables. Get the first customer first name column. I don't think it's got a customer in it anymore. It's not the orders table, it's in the customers table. I was having trouble with this one. One of my undos get carried away here. All right, so I've some transferred some stuff that used to be in my orders table is now in my uh, my orders class. It's now in my customers class. So if I ever do build a form, since I already wrote this once, if I ever do build a form that allows me to collect customer data, I 
already have functions and make sure they're not too long. <clears throat> Goes into the database and gets me the length. I already have the properties for everything that's in my database. Need to add some validation to the phone. I'll leave that for some other day. Now that we've taken those out, though, we have to replace them with the customer ID because remember from the XSD, this table no longer has a customer name. It has a customer ID. So my pizza class needs a customer ID. There's also an integer. Right. Many of you learned this when you were doing your data dictionaries that the auto number fields in the linking, in the, in when they're used as linking fields, are just integers. So this is going to be my customer ID, customer ID. And I do want to set and get because I want to be able to change it. If I pick the wrong customer for an order, go, nope, that wasn't Lyle Spindler, it was Kevin Spindler or whatever, I can pick a different one. I'll be able to change this. So this is unlike my order ID, which is an auto number in this class, in this table. This one, I should be able to change. Is there any validation I can do here? If somebody somehow messes this up and goes into the database and manipulates these manually, heaven forbid, or as many of you discovered in MySQL, you can actually write insert commands that insert auto number values, which is a bad idea. If somebody does that wrong, how could they screw up an auto number value? It's already an integer. Is there a record number zero? So all we really have to do is say, if the new value is greater than zero, then go ahead and save it. Else throw an exception because it can't be less than zero. It can't even be zero as long as it's greater than zero. It's about all we can do. <clears throat> Another thing you're going to discover when we get to that combo box, remember back to unit six or whatever it was, programming logic beginning. What happens if you don't pick anything from the combo box? What's the selected index? Negative one. This will capture that. And say, you can't do that. You've got to pick a customer from the list. You can't type your own. Can't type your own. Can't type in a zero. You have to pick one from the list. So this will capture that as well. Else, throw an exception. That's about all the validation you can do on a lookup field. Just check to make sure it's greater than zero. The primary reason we're checking for that is when we talk to the GUI, the GUI is going to send us the ID number that it thinks it is from the combo box. And if they don't pick anything in the combo box or they type something that's not in the combo box, we're going to get a negative one. So again, review. We took all the fields out of here. Customer first name, customer last name that we didn't need <clears throat> and moved them to the customer class. And then we added our linking field to the order class so that we can save the current pizza or customer ID number for this order. We need a place to put that. Now that we've done that, let's do a collapse here and see what else, I mean, any business constants that don't make any sense anymore, anything here with names? No. So that's cool. Now, many of you might have, I don't know if that's the case in um, car maintenance. Isn't there an array of valid shops? 
So need it anymore because it's in a separate table. We don't want to keep them, we don't want to have to keep both up. Every time we add a shop to the table, we're going to add one of the array. Uh -huh. So you take that array out. What's going to happen instead is you're going to fill a combo box of shops from the database. Pick one of these. And DDD stores, I don't think is validated. But if you have an array here that you no longer need because of the new table, make sure you pull the array out. In my case here, I didn't have a list of valid customers, so there's nothing to remove. We cleaned up the properties. The constructor's probably going to need a little work. Yep. So what do we want to set the customer ID number to? No. Sure. It's an integer. We've been setting all of our integers to null, except these. That's interesting. Why are they zero? Must be an old version. I wonder if this is last year's program. Did I make it nullable? Number of pies and cheese sticks are nullable, but I didn't make my customer ID nullable, and I probably should. So that works. This is just an extra one. Still has first name, last name. That one doesn't apply anymore, so I'm going to pull it. This one accepted a customer's first name and last name and said, make a new pizza order for that customer by name. Yeah, that's a lot tougher to do. Can we do it? Yeah, but not in this class. Remember, it's programming. Unless you're asking it to read your mind, there's probably a way to do it. Invalid fields. Uh-oh. If the customer ID is null, Then say you must select a customer. So remember, this is I'm, go, I'm walking through the form. The user clicks on the order date and goes save. They haven't picked a customer yet. That's not good. There is no first and last name, and they have to pick a size for the pizza. Remember, in invalid fields, all you're checking is whether the required fields, customer, size, are missing. That's all we need. Make string from array. It's probably got some issues in it. Nope. Order total. Nope. Two string. I'm tempted to take it out. This is for the combo boxes. What? Okay, two string is supposed to concatenate all this stuff. So I'm going to bring this back again. But there is no first name, there is no last name, but there is a customer ID, and it's just going to be this gross looking number stuck in the middle of everything. But I can look at it. I expect there to be an ID number after the date. Some of you have been putting spaces or dots or dashes or slashes in between all this stuff. That's fine. When I see the date for the pizza order and I see 4 slash 7 slash 2014 6, I can figure that out. The 6 is the customer ID. If the numbers are too squished together, then absolutely just put some spaces in between. Nothing wrong with that. If you're using two string for testing, it's the only reason you'd need this. Okay, now my data access methods. Anything exciting here? Delete a record? No. Get a record, probably. Order lookup? No. But oh, wait a minute, didn't I have to concat? Yeah, but that's all being done in the data class. The data class is taking data from two different tables and creating a customer or an order lookup that includes the customer name. 
get record has a problem because it's got first and last name. So what we want to do here is transfer the customer ID instead. There's no last name. Where do we save the name? We don't. When we get a new pizza order for Lyle Spindler, we save the number, 77. Not his name. His name is never saved in the order record at all. What if the customer's not on the list? Oh, the programming logic advanced. Not really. You just create a button or a link that says new customer. And when you click on new customer, it takes you to the customer form. And you add a new customer to your database. And then you come back and you pick them from the combo box. In order for an order to be placed, the customer already has to exist. If the customer doesn't exist, we can't place an order. That's the child. We can't have a child for a parent record that doesn't exist. And so you have to add logic to your project, and you don't in this class. Programming logic advanced, which we don't have yet. Programming logic advanced, that's where you would start finding ways to tie these forms together to link them somehow. So that cleans get record up. We now have to do the same thing with save record. Could the customer ID still be null when we're, when we're done? No. So the only thing we have to transfer to the business class is the customer ID, and I hope this is the right location. If it's not, I'll get squiggles. It's the right location. It'll never be null. Our validation says customer ID is required. Since the customer ID is required, it will not be null when we get in here because invalid fields would kick us up. But instead of saving the customer's name, or instead of updating the customer's name, we update the customer ID. Did that, did that. Add a method to retrieve the lookup data for customers. Did we do that? I think so. Yep, customer lookup, did that. Modify class order, remove first last name, replace it with a customer ID, remove the properties, make sure the customer ID is bigger than zero. If there's anything else that's causing problems like save record and get record, modify them. <coughs> and then on the form, add a combo box, suggest append, replace them, or remove all the text boxes. Now comes the cool part. We have a combo box on the form. We are going to load that form, that combo box, excuse me, we're going to load it from the database. And so all the names are going to show up in the combo box from the database. How do we get out of database? Our trusty, dusty, query, customer lookup table function. This, this gets me a list of all the customers sorted by customer name. It already does it. So we need to call this method from the GUI. Say, please go get me the list. Take the list. Throw it in the combo box. Okay. Except for one thing. This query returns two things. The ID and the customer name. Right? The ID and the customer name. What do I do with the ID? We need them both. We want the user to see customer names in the combo box when they drop it down. But magically, behind the scenes, what you and I want to do is change or translate the customer's name into their ID number. And when we leave the combo box, we take the ID number and we put it in the business class. Not the name. The ID number. So we're still using a validating event. But when the user picks something out of that combo box, we want to transfer the ID number to the business class, not the name. How do we do that? Magic. I'm going to create a custom method called load customers because there is a little bit of code here, and I don't want to clutter up my form load. So I'm in the GUI now. 
All the rest of the stuff has been preliminary. We got it all set up. I'm in the GUI. In form load, I want to load sodas, but I also want to load my customers. So I'm creating a method, my own custom method. So down here we go find the load methods. Let's collapse so we can see what's going on here. Load sodas, load grid, here's where it goes. This method gets the current list of customers and their IDs <coughs> and puts them in the combo box. It's a private function, doesn't return anything, load customers. What do we do with that? We look in the notes. We called load from there. The combo box, remember our binding source? I know it's been a couple of weeks, so let's review. Here's my binding source down here. It's got the copy of the data that goes into the grid. It had a data source. A combo box can, we've never done this, but can also have a data source. Where do I get the data for my combo box? I ask the business class to give me some data and throw it in there. One simple line. The combo box's data source is equal to my lookup table from the business class. So this says, hey, you business class, give me the lookup data, please. Sends it, links it to the combo box. Way too simple. You guys are so lucky. So in here, I want to say that my CMB customer dot data source is equal to my business class, which is customer dot customer lookup table. Give me one. Business class knows how to do this, right? It's magic, but the business class knows how to go out to the database and get customer lookup data. Talks to the XSD, the XSD goes to the database, etc. This gives me a data table, which I can then link to the combo box. Maybe it's that simple to start with. Let's find out. I want to see if I get customers. Grinding, grinding, grinding. No. <laughs> Class pizza still got a problem. We got a semicolon here. Oops. Can't get my airless back because it's sitting on top of my timer, so I'm just going to run again. <clears throat> Semicolon. Sounds like my GUI, the rest of those errors are because my GUI still has a bunch of errors right here. Those are typos. Somewhere like in load form, it talks about combo box display record. There we go. Display record talks about text boxes. They don't exist anymore. I deleted them. Darn it. So I need to put something in here. CMB customer dot what? Let's leave that out for right now. I just want to see if the stuff loaded in there. So I gotta get rid of these errors. There might be one in button save. Probably not. Oops. Yep, gonna have to fix that. What else we got? Little red marks aren't much help, are they? Pink ones are squiggles. <coughs> Why can't I get my error list? Come on. There we go. It's fixed. Can we still complain about it? Then I fixed that. Oh, 
thought I did. Those don't exist anymore on this form, so they go away. I'm going to do a build clean. Should clean up my error list. Oh, that was it. Okay. That was not it. Ugh. Error padding, who cares? First name, last name, validating. We will have a CMB validating before we're done. That one we already fixed. So, drag it. All I'm trying to do here is check to see if my crumble box has got names in it. <coughs> nope, not quite. <laughs> because what I gave it was a table full of rows and the two string for the combo box or the two string for the rows didn't know what to do with it. But notice I do have a whole pile of them. That's good. So in a way that's good. So now we got to figure out how do I get the customer name to display? That's also simple. The combo box, if it has a data source, includes two other properties that we're going to make use of. The first is the display member. Which of the fields from the data table, because there's only two, right? Because whenever I do combo boxes, there's only two, customer ID and customer. Which of the fields should I display? And the value member is which of the fields am I going to grab as a value? So when I ran this, we saw this goofy row. Picture that as 137 gall comma voker. How do we display that? Doesn't know how. This is going to tell it. The two other pieces we're missing here is the display member CMB customer dot display member equals in quotation marks the name of the field that you want displayed. If you're not sure, you go back to the XSD, which I have closed. And here's my, I didn't do a very good save, did I? Notice how these guys don't line up. There we go. I have a customer ID and a customer. Let's do a save all this time so that they size and stick. So I'm going to make sure I handle both of those. And then the CMB customer dot. Is it member value? Is that what it was? Display member value member, sorry. Equals the customer ID. It's a little customer ID. Capital D. Is it going to make a difference? Probably. So if you can't quite get those to work, check your capitalization. Again, most of you are using my DVD, my car maintenance databases. Some of the IDs may still be capitalized the Skyward way. I guess Skyward capitalizes all letters if they're only if the abbreviation is only two letters long, they capitalize it. Like state or ID, both caps. Weird. At least I think so. So now let's see if I can see what's in that combo box. Aha! Here's all my people. And if I want, it's a suggest append. I can pick it. In two minutes, I think I can pull this off. I need a validating event. Soda customer will come before that. This method sends a current contents 
sends the ID number to the business class. An error could occur, because if they haven't picked one, remember we wrote logic that says if it's negative one or zero, that's not good. So now just change all the names to protect the guilty. Customer and order customer ID equals CMBO. Oh, what do we put in here? It's not the text, that's the customer's name. How do I get at that value member? You might want to put value member in here, but that's not right. That's the name of the field whose value we're saving. What we really want is the value itself. And I forget which property is, so I'm going to look it up. It is the selected value. Oh. Otherwise, throw an error. Uh, this could be any type. We know it's an integer, so we're going to typecast that to an int. Is that the right language? Yes. The selected value could be text. We're using ID numbers. Almost always do. Yours for your project will be integers, so you convert them. And now I'm going to put a breakpoint in here because I want to show you what happens, and then we're going to quit. CMB already. CM. Oops. CMB customer validating, and I can't simply type this. I have to wire it. Never did that. So I stole some code, but I need to wire that to my combo box now on the selected index changed event. That's the one we were using for combo boxes. For CMB... Uh oh Maybe that wasn't too smart. I don't think that's too smart either. It'll change them both, was all I'm afraid of. Okay. Cut that. Delete this. Go back to the form. Double click to create the selected index changed event, which is really what I want. Move it up here. Fingers crossed. Lost my, oh, still doesn't like that. That'll go away. Here's my breakpoint. That's the one I want to see. What's that selected value? Selected value is 36. Error marker's gone. <clears throat> For Jane Doe, the selected value is 64. Each one of the selected values is different because we brought over the name and the ID number as a pair. They are both stored in the combo box in one row in a whole table full of combo box. And by defining up here in form load that we want to display the customer and we want the value member to be the ID, that keeps the two separate. When we come back next time, we'll modify our get record or display record and probably save record so that when we change these, they both get saved. So we'll do that next time. But we do have our combo box finally loading customers from a different table than we're working with. So we don't have to type in ID numbers. We can select customers using the human readable form, as my notes say.